Now, as we all know, there's a little bit of controversy always going around fresh and fit. But, you know, now they're just bringing up some old shit that they have old comments, old remarks about um, African women. But, uh, yeah, we're not here to talk about fresh and fit necessarily specifically. Because this question of being a sellout, being black and not liking black women, that that's like been a thing long, far before this recent controversy um, around fresh and fit. So I just want to talk about it um, as I had a video idea for this shit. And it was a couple months ago, and I literally decided to scrap it because I was like, this is not fit for YouTube currently. I'm so blue because I actually sat on top of that for the longest time and recently decided to scrap it. So I guess I'm just uh, uh, late to the punch. Yeah, so let's just start off with the fresh and fit part of this uh, controversy. Um, So recently they just got, got called out for some past remarks because um they said things like, oh, we don't like Knight Riders or they just had some very racist comments. Some very racist comments about um, black females. And they were um, very negative and um, almost insinuated that they would never, ever, ever find themselves with a black woman. No matter how she looked, they just don't do darkies. Now, I was um, with my brother yesterday when we had first heard the news. And um, it, it just sounded so wild. They were being like so flagrant. It was like the funniest shit in the world. Honestly, I thought they were joking at first because just the wording, like hearing two black men say what they were saying, they sounded like dead ass, like some racist ass, fucking not even white men, like literally just like, uh, like, like white men, even, even they won't take it as far as what, <laughs> what fresh and fit were saying. I don't know. I mean, I know there's the the perception of some people from Africa that they are not black, like Ethiopian people. You know, they think they're like divine of a higher race, some shit like that. But still, just to, just to say the type of stuff they're saying was hilarious. So that's where it starts. Um, but honestly, the question of being a sellout because you are not with your own race. That's what I really want to focus on. Because to me, that's just such a funny topic. You see, I think that it's very rare for you to see um, white people really put such an emphasis on the race of your partner so much anymore. Like, like for women yeah like if it's a white dad and the daughter is dating a black man then yeah (laughs) the dad might have something to say but if it's a white man and like he brings home a a asian girl or a a hispanic girl or a black girl like usually the parents aren't gonna most of the time i don't think they really mind but hey i'm not white and that's not necessarily what this is about but in the black community i swear since a little kid Bruh, I've heard my aunts, my uncles, they all say shit like, you you better not bring home no white girl, or that type of shit, or, oh, I hope that uh, I get to have some black grandchildren, that type of shit. Like, ever since we were fucking young, to all my cousins, all the nieces and nephews, they made it known, you better not bring home no white girl. Now, over time, that's that's definitely changed, especially as we've all gotten older. Like, they're not just going to say that shit to, like, a 17-year-old, the same that they would say it to, like, an 11-year-old, you know? To me, that type of stuff has just always stood out and always been, like, in bold text to me. Like, ever since a youngin', <laughs> there really haven't been, like, many black girls that I was around just because the school that I went to... There was literally only, like, four black people throughout middle school in all of the classes. In Well, in my class and the next class, there were only me, Marcus, Lindsay, and Trine. <laughs> I mean, sure, there were people that came and left, but that's that's the four people. Yeah, so I whip out the yearbook, I show you, there's there's only four people, Jaquez does not count, he's half, he's a half C, I'm just kidding, I don't even think he was a half C, um, 
Uh, but yeah, that, that's besides the fact. Um, I'm just trying to say that since uh, Youngin, there wasn't much female black representation except for like my family that's around me. So of course I'm not gonna fucking like black girls. Uh, every time I think of a black girl, uh, I'm just gonna see my own fucking family members because those are like the only black girls that I know. That was just my logic as a kid, you know? That's how fucking kids' minds work. It's literally, I understand how flawed it is, but hey, like a kid's brain is not even fucking developed. So I can, I can just, from a child, that was the perception. But then once I got into high school, you know, and I just kind of realized, hey, there's actually some attractive black girls out there. But before, I hadn't really seen any. I didn't see anyone that I was attracted to. So I can understand the the ideology of just not liking your own race. And I never understood the ideology of how that makes you a sellout. But recently, now that I've gone through high school and graduated, I've had uh, a lot of time to learn and research this um, idea and this topic. So I'm just going to um talk about it right now. Now, you may be wondering, why has Michael B. Jordan been on the screen for so long? Well, because for years, Michael B. Jordan has been the subject of backlash for he, merely who he dates. You see, influential black uh, men in in their dating lives, there's constantly the <clears throat> perception of the black community behind them and if the black community don't like who you with then you're a sellout and thus michael b jordan has been a sellout for the past five and four years you know because now that he's successful he's not breeding with his own kind and that means that he is putting the success in other places other gene pools now that's that's like a um, it sounds almost completely like exaggerated and ridiculous, but I've seen all, there's this show on YouTube, I don't remember what it's called, but it's just like, you know, uh, for black women mostly, and they just talk about these types of topics and all that, and unanimously, they agreed that this man is a sellout, practically. <laughs> it's just, um... To me, like, the idea that who someone is dating defines who they are as a person. Or just the idea that in order to to prosper or respect or support the black community, if you're successful and black, or if you're just black, you ought not find yourself in the arms of a woman who is not black. Now, you may have the same question that I had um a while ago. So what if I'm black and I find myself dating a uh, Japanese girl? Well, actually, you see, you become slightly less of a sellout, but still, in a way, you're a sellout because she's not black. Now, you become slightly yes, less of a sellout because she doesn't have the same implicit biases and hatred towards black people that a white woman has even if the white woman says that she is not racist and conducts herself in a very mannerable and righteous or just way she still has that white hate inside of her <laughs> it runs through her veins thus thus any brother that finds himself laying with a white woman is a sellout now now the the tension between the blacks and the japanese folks is very low and um they're very accepting of each other but you still did not invest into the black economy thus you are a sellout are you following me i don't think you guys are necessarily following me now i'm speaking from the perspective of what i've learned uh, what I've been told by people who are uh, into this sort of thing. That's what most um, black separatists, we'll call them separatists. They're the extremists and they're fighting for the, for the, the black, the, the negroidization of 
uh, the media and uh, and everyone. Everyone has to be black. It's all pro black, um, black owned business, black black owned government. Make Barack Obama, give him a third term. Yeah, I'm 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 sure that a lot of you are um on the same page as me. You 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 don't think that uh someone's relationship status is necessarily uh that important in defining their character. Well, let me give you more reasons as to why you're wrong. You see, if you're a black man and and you truly are pro black and you truly support um the the black community, then you're not going to go out of your way to be with um a woman who is not black because when you have children with said woman she will not be able to provide the infrastructure of a black household okay that that's enough of that i think i did a good enough job explaining the the side of the argument that is in support of calling anyone who dates outside of their race a sellout but now let me just give you some rationale and some logic and some perspective. Now, in the 21st century, most people do not let race uh, become a, a defining factor in defining someone's character. So if you're white and you're a shitty person, if you're black and you're a shitty person, I don't really want anything to do with you. It doesn't matter what someone's race is. That's that's the ideology that most of us youngins have adopted. You know, we we actually tend to generalize probably the most, but um even even then we we understand that every generalization is going to have the polar opposite. So, you got to keep in mind that not everyone is the same. Now, I would just like to bring up an argument that, not an argument, but just a point in a conversation I had with a respectable black man in my life. And um, so I was sitting outside with him talking about this very same topic. And he brought up the idea of a room full of black women. So if it's a room full of black women... And I'm supposed to pick someone that's black, right? Let's say half of the room is white. Okay, I'm not going to touch any of the white. Just because, you know, I got to stay stay solid, stay 100% and have that pure, pure Akebulon blood, bloodline running through my, um, my heritage, my family. I need to keep it pure, so I'm not going to touch any of the white. But now that half of the room is black... So where do I go from there? Like, do I just pick the darkest one? Like, at what? how do I distinguish between women at this point? If the only factor in who I choose is race, then, then what am I supposed to do? They're all black. Do I just... Is that why in Africa they have, like, fucking eight wives? Yeah, so, I, I don't know. I guess that this has come too far. Uh, I think you guys understand where I'm coming from, um, fresh and fit definitely are racist, but just because you're, um, dating outside of your race does not mean that you've become a sellout, and if you feel as if you have to conform to the ideology of your race simply because you're that race, then you yourself are a racist-ass sellout, screw you.